Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel, The Reader Teacher. My name's Scott. It's December the 1st, and this month I'm sharing my festive favourites, my most anticipated children's books coming out this year for Christmas 2022. I'll be going through them alphabetically by title, and if you just want to hear about a specific book, then make sure to use the timestamps in the description below. Don't forget to leave me a like, hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. And all the links to the books that I mention in this video will also be in the description box below. So let's take a look at the books. First up, with lots of laughs at every level, is The 156 Story Treehouse by Andy Griffiths and Terry Denton, where in this addition to the best-selling treehouse series, things are getting festive. They've added 13 new levels, including a wishing well, a world record breaking level, and an amazing mind reading sandwich making machine. It's the night before Christmas, but it's not going well for Andy and Terry. They're at war with an angry snowman, Santa has crashed his sleigh and fallen into the cloning machine, and Mr. Big Nose wants a new book by tomorrow. Can they defeat the snowman, save Christmas, and get their book written in time? Well, what are you waiting for? Come on up and see for yourselves. Big thanks Macmillan for the finished coffee. Next is The Arctic Railway Assassin by M.G. Leonard, Sam Sedgman and Eliza Paganelli, which is the thrilling sixth and for the moment the final adventure in the series, but which can be read as a standalone novel too. In this one, Harrison Beck and Uncle Nat climb aboard the night train to Narvik, travelling to the Arctic Circle to see the Northern Lights for Christmas. But as their train leaves Stockholm, they realise they're being followed by a sinister figure, and Hal's powers of observation are tested when Uncle Nat's past comes back to haunt him. Journeying into the never-ending night of the Arctic winter, our railway detectives must outsmart an assassin in their most chilling adventure yet, in which nothing is as it seems. Thanks Macmillan for sending me a finished coffee. Also out this Christmas is The Big Christmas Bake by Fiona Barker and Pippa Koenig, which takes us through the 12 days of Christmas in the popular carol by weaving them cleverly together into the ingredients for a 12th night cake. Starting with the partridge and its gift of dried fruit, this rhyming story includes all of the familiar characters, from a trio of French hens bringing baking powder, six geese bringing eggs and lots of feathers too, and ten lords helping to carry the cake into the oven ready to bake. At the end, there's a recipe included to bake your own cake at home, giving this book the potential to be a favourite Christmas story, as well as a resource to be used every year in introducing a Twelfth Night cake tradition to your home. Thanks Quarto for the gorgeous finished coffee. Based on the real story of an evacuee doll featured on best-loved BBC TV show The Repair Shop is The Christmas Doll by Amy Sparks and Katie Hickey. In this one we see Susan, who is very young when she is evacuated from wartime London and sent to live with a family in the countryside. Unsure of her new surroundings and desperately missing her home, she doesn't hold much hope for the months ahead. Then, on Christmas morning, she's given a doll and Susan thinks this must be the best present she has ever had. Yet, standing here now, in the repair shop, thinking back on her childhood, she realises that in fact the greatest gift was the kindness bestowed upon her, and her ability to remember it always as she holds her precious doll close to her. Thanks Walker for the gorgeous finished copy. The Christmas Owl, co-written by Ellen Kalish, Gideon Steerer and illustrated by Ramona Kaulitsky, is a beautiful picture book inspired by the true story that captivated the world, about a little owl found in one of the world's most famous Christmas trees at Rockefeller Center in New York City. When little owl's home is cut down by people saying it will make a beautiful Christmas tree, she's not sure she wants anything to do with Christmas, whatever that means. But then she's saved by a woman named Ellen, whose house is merrily decorated for the holiday and filled with birds who need someone to care for them. Surrounded by kindness and helpful new friends, little owl begins to wonder if Christmas might not be such a bad thing after all. Thanks Anderson Press for the finished copy. Step into the pages of A Family Christmas by Alana Washington and Emily Nash as the most magical day of the year unfolds. Full of fun, festivities and all the wonderful traditions that go into this time of year, follow a loving family as they enjoy their Christmas day together. From racing downstairs to admire the presents on Christmas morning, to welcoming guests to the house, including animal ones, and sitting down for a big lunch, to going for a walk in the snow afterwards and having plenty of fun and playing games, 
and then finally fallen asleep on the sofa or tucked up in bed dreaming of Christmas next year. This heartwarming and beautiful book feels like a festive hug as it celebrates the very heart of what Christmas means, family. Thanks you clan for the finished copy. Wrap up warm before reading The Frost Goblin by the best-selling author of Sky Song and the Unmapped Chronicles, Abby Elphinstone, and renowned illustrator Fiona Woodcock, the co-creators of The Snow Dragon. In Bertie Crash Wallop's noisy family, it can sometimes feel like there's no room for a quiet boy like him. But when Bertie meets a family of goblins on the night of the deepest frost, is it possible he might make some magic and discover his own place in the world? This book looks so stunning and the perfect book to cuddle up with on those frosty winter nights and cosy Christmas mornings. And big thanks Simon & Schuster for the finished copy. Join London's handsomest fox on a brand new adventure with heart this Christmas in Gaspard's Christmas by Zeb Soames and James Mayhew. While searching for food on the snow-covered street, Gaspard stumbles upon an old man with only an old coat protecting him against the cold. Recognising his need for assistance, he snuggles up to him for warmth before summoning his friends. And thanks to the animals quick thinking and listing the help of their humans, the elderly man's life is saved and so is Christmas. The unmistakable message about supporting those who are less fortunate shines through strongly in this one. Alex T. Smith's modern Christmas classics, such as How Winston Delivered Christmas, should be a yearly tradition to read at this time of year. And that is no different with The Grumpus, which is this year's offering about a gorgeous, grumpy character. Do you know about The Grumpus? And his dastardly, dreadful Christmas plan? And about the awful thing that happened at the North Pole on Christmas Eve? And following the adventures of an unlikely hero as he journeys to the North Pole, and inspired by the Krampus and with a hint of the Grinch, The Grumpus is a heartwarming story that celebrates the true meaning of Christmas, as we unwittingly and somewhat see him reluctantly making lots of new friends along the way. Thanks Macmillan for the hardback finished copy. Meet the Humbug family in Humbug, the Elf Who Saved Christmas by Stephen Butler and Kenneth Anderson. A hilarious, huge-hearted hug of a book that will have you laughing out loud this Christmas. And this is because the Humbugs aren't the typical family you see on sparkly wrapping paper or in snowy storybooks about Santa's grotto. You won't see them on the front of Christmas cards either and they definitely won't be knitted on your grandma's favourite festive jumper. Those happy scenes are only reserved for the likes of the workshop elves, and certainly not the humbugs. Nope. They manage a much less glamorous part of Santa's factory, the RPD department. That's reindeer poo disposal to you and me. Yuck. But when a mince pie related mishap combined with an unfortunate letter losing incident sees them exiled from the home, the humbugs, together with their clumsy reindeer and wheelie bin sleigh, Go on a great and daring adventure where they discover the true meaning of Christmas and the real heroes who make it special. Thanks Scholastic for the finished copy. Jim Spectacular Christmas by Emma Thompson and Axel Scheffler tells the story of Jim, a very lucky, very special and very grubby dog. Jim isn't just any dog though, he was the real life museum dog of Victoria and Albert Museum director Sir Henry Cole. In Emma and Axel's hands, Jim appears on page as a scruffy, book-loving and mischievous dog, as happy hobnobbing with Queen Victoria as supervising workers build in the museum. And through this adventure filled with high emotion, guilt, redemption, unexpected presents and a life-changing brush with royalty, we also learn more about the creation of the first Christmas card. Thanks Puffin for the finished copy. In Kid Christmas of the Claus Brothers Toy Shop by David Litchfield, we're introduced to Nicky Claus, who wanted to make every child happy if only just for one day. Nicky works with his three uncles in the Claus Brothers Toy Emporium. Uncle Hans makes the toys, Uncle Louie checks them, and Uncle Levi adds the, what's the scientific term for it? Ah yes, the magic. Each toy made at the Emporium has a special sparkle that means it will find the child at his perfect four. But one day, Nicky notices a young girl with her face pressed up to the glass. When she disappears, he follows her and finds her living on the streets with lots of other children, none of whom can afford a toy. Nicky vows that for one night only, every child will have the toy of their dreams, and, with the help of his uncles and some flying reindeer, the legend of Father Christmas is born. Big thanks, Quarto, for sending me a finished copy. It's the Christmas Holidays in Llama on Ice by Annabel Sammy and Alan Fatimaharan. 
and Yasmin is miserable. Her family doesn't celebrate Christmas, so she doesn't understand all the hype. Plus, her human best friend, Ezra, has gone on holiday, and Levi, her toy llama best friend, is away on a training mission too. And it's about to get worse. When a snowstorm hits London, Yasmin's enemy, Tia, can't fly to a luxury holiday in France. Yasmin's horrified when she gets sent on a solo mission to give Tia the best Christmas ever. Soon, Tia is bossing Yasmin around, and without her friends to help, Yasmin starts to wonder if making her arch nemesis happy might be a mission impossible. That is, until a fa la 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 llama arrives, because Levi is back. Big thanks, Farshaw, for the finished coffee. In Mrs. Claus Takes a Vacation by Lena Salsenas, Mrs. Claus needs to get out of the house. The endless snow at the North Pole is getting her down, and she doesn't see why her husband should get all the travel time in the family. So she hitches up the reindeer and takes a world tour, leaving Santa to take care of himself and the remaining reindeer for the first time in a long time. Mrs. Claus loves traveling the world, making new friends, eating exciting new foods and sunning herself on the beach. But as Christmas approaches, she starts to miss Santa as much as he misses her. Will she make it back home in time for Christmas? Thanks Scholastic for sending me a finished copy. From the queen of heart and humour, Jenny Pearson, comes a magical Christmas adventure filled with festive delight and the joy of celebrating Christmas with the ones you love, with Operation Nativity, illustrated by Katie Keir. When Oscar and Molly rush outside to investigate a massive crash in the night, they're not expecting to find a dazed Angel Gabriel wandering around their grandparents' back garden, and they're certainly not expecting to find themselves in a race against time to save Christmas. But if they don't track down a missing shepherd, wise man, Donkey and the actual Mary and Joseph, who've all crash-landed in Chipping Bottom, thanks to an angelic mishap. Not only will Christmas cease to exist, but they will too. No presents, no crackers, no Christmas dinner, no Oscar and Molly. Operation Nativity is on. Thanks, Osborne, for the finished hardback coffee. What happens when a little white fox meets a certain jolly old soul? Find out in Through the North Pole Snow by Polly Faber and Richard Jones, a sweet, enchantingly illustrated take on how Santa spends the year leading up to Christmas. When a hunting fox pounces through the snow and finds itself inside a warm home, it's welcomed and given dinner by a kind bearded man with a big round belly. Soon yawning, the man leaves the fox to explore through piles of strewn wrapping paper and rows of empty shelves. As the man sleeps, the fox curls up too, until sun and flowers return, luring them both outside. But soon the man gets back to work, drawing and measuring, painting and hammering, sewing and stuffing, until all the empty shelves are filled from top to bottom. Paired with Richard Jones's charmingly detailed illustrations, Polly Faber's gentle story offers a fresh look at how Santa prepares for the most magical night of the year. Thanks Walker Bucks for the finished copy. Publishing in paperback this Christmas and recently named Waterstone's Children's Book of the Month is The Very Merry Murder Club, an anthology of wintry middle grade mystery short stories that brings together 13 of the most exciting, diverse and award winning authors in children's literature, edited by Serena Patel and Robin Stevens and illustrated by Harry Woodgate. Packed full of Christmassy crimes, wintry whodunits, festive foul play and murderous mysteries, there's a story for everyone in this selection that shows that anyone can be a hero no matter their background. Big thanks Farshaw for the finished copy. In Virtually Christmas by David Baddiel and Stephen Lenton, it used to be the most wonderful time of the year. But for years now, Christmas has been taken over by global internet giant Winterzone. All the things that made Christmas special are gone. The human connection, the baubles passed down through generations, even the rubbish cracker jokes. Instead, Christmas is run by robots, while 3D holograms of Santa Claus called Santa avatars check if you've been naughty or nice. And on Christmas Eve, all of the presents are delivered by Zone Drones instead of Santa's reindeer. But when they stumble on a curious clue, 11-year-old Etta and her friend Monty find themselves thrown into a fight to bring back Christmas. Racing against time and against the might of Winter Zone, they must find the real Santa before the true meaning of the festive season is lost forever. We Disagree About This Tree by Ross Collins is a fantastically funny festive story about the bear and mouse who always disagree from the best-selling There's a Bear on My Chair. Bear and mouse have finally overcome their differences 
and are living together in perfect harmony until it's time to decorate the Christmas tree. Beer wants dazzling lights, while Mouse prefers gigantic baubles. And wait a minute, did Mouse just put a manatee on the top? A topsy-turvy tree is definitely the last straw and it looks as if Christmas is ruined. But maybe, just maybe, Beer and Mouse can reach a compromise in time. Thanks Nosy Crow for the finished hardback coffee. Mixing much loved traditional verse and brand new seasonal verse, We Wish You a Merry Christmas and other festive poems is the perfect stocking filler present for poetry lovers of all ages. Chosen and illustrated by Chris Riddell, it contains a festive flurry of classic and modern Christmas poems such as The Night Before Christmas, The Twelve Days of Christmas, Deck the Halls, In the Bleak Midwinter, We Wish You a Merry Christmas, and We Three Kings. Thanks Macmillan for the finished copy. Where Bjorn Belongs by Samuel Langley Swain and Myrna Imamovic is a sensitive Christmas story of friendship and belonging centred around the unbreakable bond between a boy and a bear. Due to his autism, Arctic enthusiast Arthur does not like Christmas, the noise, the lights and the crowds. He keeps his toy polar bear close for security. After losing his precious bear and asking Father Christmas for a new one, he wakes up to find a real polar bear in his garden. Arthur names his new friend Bjorn and in spite of his best efforts to keep Bjorn cold and happy, he realises that he needs to help his friend return to the Arctic where he belongs. Big thanks Outlook Press for sending me this stunning finished copy. Lastly is The Woodcutter and the Snow Prince by Ian Eagleton and David Ortu, which is set in the ice to warm the coldest of hearts and is a beautifully illustrated retelling of the classic Snow Queen story with LGBTQ plus and inclusivity at its heart. Every Christmas Eve, a lonely woodcutter named Kai carves statues for anyone who might pass by. But one magical night, his loneliness is soothed by a visit from the Snow Prince. Feared by many, Kai sees hope in the Prince's eyes but as the prince freezes once more, imprisoned in his ice palace, can Kai break the curse? Thanks Outlook Press for the finished copy. So these are the books I'm most excited about reading this Christmas. If you enjoyed watching, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel below. The last thing I'd like to say is Merry Christmas and as always, keep reading and I'll see you in the next video.